Hey folks, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be making a really simple network that just highlights how powerful a little bit of Python can be inside of Touch Designer, even when it comes to content creation and not so much worrying about state machines and logic. So the network that we've built here, we've got a text dat on the left side and we have a timer. And this timer is really the whole functionality inside of itself. And what we can see that it does is it essentially types out your text as if someone is going letter by letter and typing it all out. Now, one of the nice things is the way we're going to build this even works with new lines and all kinds of formatting that you'd want to put inside of that text app. And you can see it just goes through and copies it out as if someone is typing that back for you. So let's go ahead and delete everything here and we'll start from scratch. So the first thing I want is a text dat where I'm going to write in the text that I want copied over and typed out. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to be something like source. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make my text top, which is where we're going to be entering all of the characters from that text dat. Now I'll start off by going to the text parameters and deleting a derivative from here because we're gonna to wanna to type in our own text. And just for this example, I'm going to up the resolution to 512 by 512. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn on word wrapping because I find that to be very, very helpful with a text top. So now I'm gonna make a timer chop in between both of these dats, well, dats and tops here, that's what I should say. And a lot of the functionality and the magic behind this is going to be inside of our timer callbacks. Now, if you've never used a timer callback before, don't worry, we're gonna go nice and slow with this. So the first thing I'm gonna set up on my timer are just some of its general parameters. So I'll start by making the length a little bit faster here, and actually a lot faster, about 0.5 seconds, because the way we're gonna use this timer is that we're gonna have a short length that's constantly going to cycle, and what we're going to do is we're gonna set the cycle amount to be the amount of characters inside of our source text dat. So before I can start that, let me enter some text in here. And I'll go back to my timer chops parameters. I'm gonna turn on the cycle button. And a lot of the time you'll turn off the cycle limit because you just want that timer to loop forever. But in this case, we do want that cycle limit on. Now where we have the maximum cycles here, this is where we're gonna add an expression that's going to get the length of all of the characters inside of this source text app. So how do we do that? Well, let's start off by referencing it. So we'll go op, open a set of brackets, put a quotation mark, source, quotation mark, close that set of brackets. Now we know how we can get the text from there by typing dot text. Now that op source dot text is going to give us the text inside of that dat. Now using Python, it's really easy to calculate how many characters that is just by putting that inside of a len function, which is short for length. So if we go back to the beginning of our expression here, type len, open a parentheses, and then go to the end of our op source text and close that set of parentheses. Essentially, we have the length of our op source dot text, and you can see here it gives us 15 characters. If I go back and type more, and I reinitialize our timer, we can see now it's 29. So that's constantly going to give us the right amount of cycles so that every cycle we can then have a little bit of Python code that grabs a letter and adds it to the text tops text field. Now, the final thing we're gonna do on this timer chop before we move into the callbacks is go to the outputs. And in this case, we don't really need ready or done. So I'll turn those off. And I will turn on the cycles just because it'll be useful for us to see it progressing along its path. So now we're essentially ready to jump into our callbacks here. So what I want to do is activate the viewer here. And this is so simple, you almost don't even need a code editor. So if you've never used callbacks before, the way they work is that they're like little functions that get called based on events. And that's why they're called callbacks. So we can see here that there's so many different versions. We have on initialize, on ready, on start, on timer pulse, on segment enter, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these relate to different events that happen inside of the timer chop. So for example, if we think about on initialize, this function is going to get run every time this initialize button gets clicked. 
If we think about something like on start, that function is going to get run every time somebody hits the start button on the timer. Now for us, what we want is all the way near the bottom is on cycle. So every time that timer chop cycles, it's going to trigger this function here. Now the nice thing about this is it also gives us a little bit of helpful information. We can actually tell which cycle number we're on and that's going to be important. And that's how we're going to every cycle grab the next character. So if we were just going to simply start writing this out, the first thing we're going to do is we know where we're going to write our text to, which is going to be this text parameter here. So I can even just start by referencing it here and saying op text one dot par dot text equals. Now we have to figure out how are we going to pull every single character out of our source dat here. Well, first let's just start with something easy. Let's just reference it. So we know we're going to go to op source. We know we're doing something with the text inside of it. So let's go ahead and type text. Now, one of the great things about Python is how it treats text and how you can actually treat a whole string of text as if it was like a list. So if you ever worked with list before, you know that you can say, you know, from this long list, give me this item number. Now, using that same thing on a string lets us essentially create a very simple, you know, trick here where if I open and close a set of square brackets, I can say every time this cycles, start from the first letter and go all the way to the current cycle number, just like that. So now if we review this really quick, essentially we're going to text one, we're getting its parameter, we're getting that text parameter, which we can see here, the text tops text parameter. And what we're writing to it is every cycle, we're going to our source text, we're getting the text values out of it, and then treating that Python string like a list, starting from the beginning, and the colon here is the cool part because the colon is what allows us to set a range inside of the list. So we're going from the beginning of the string all the way up to the current cycle number. So if you can imagine if we had 10 characters and we restart our timer chop, the cycle is going to be zero, the next one's going to be one, the next one's going to be two, the next cycle is going to be three. And as those cycles progress, we're essentially revealing more and more of our text and writing it to that text top. So that's really all there is to this example. So now if I go to my timer, initialize it and start it, we can see every 0.5 seconds, my cycle increases, and that's going to essentially reveal more and more of that text. Now, in most cases, you'll probably want this to move a little bit faster than this. So I'm just going to initialize my timer again and maybe set this to be 0 0.05. Now, if I initialize that and start it again, now it looks a little more interesting. And you can see why the word wrapping is so helpful because it'll automatically make sure all that text is in there. Now, the great thing about what we've been doing so far is because we're using a lot of these native Python functionalities and we're not, you know, making our own crazy system here, it's going to support new lines, paragraph. So I can type a little paragraph here. Paragraph number two starts here. It'll even do special characters and basically really exactly type out everything that you had inside your text app right into your text top. So with that said, I hope that shows you how even a tiny bit of Python inside a touch designer can almost give you superpowers to do whatever you want, even for content purposes. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.